Well, thank you for uh, being a part of Valley Advocate Session, Seth. Uh, really appreciate honor. it, uh, yeah. you being here. Honor um, and a privilege, for sure. Really yeah, cool. I, I know you got your start uh, in uh, some rock bands, but how, how, what, what led you to, from that to become a solo performer? Um, I had done a lot of stuff with a lot of different, uh, a few different acts, and we had toured and everything, and um, I just, if, if the band that I was in actually right before I started doing my solo stuff was like really intense, kind of like almost metal stuff. I was doing a lot of screaming and some singing, um, but it was just musically and kind of spiritually intense. So I think that um, when that band actually started kind of disbanding and falling apart, disintegrating for whatever reason, um, I just said, well, you know, I, I'm too wired right now. I can't, I'm too into music, I can't stop. And I was like, well, temporarily, maybe until I figure out if I want to do a different band or something, I'll just uh, do some solo gigs, just play guitar and sing and mm -hmm. do some gigs and just for fun and kind of get my feet wet in that. I've never done that. I had never done that until that point. And then it just turned into something else. It turned into what I was supposed to do, I think. So that's what's kind of catapulted me and brought me where all these beautiful places that I've gotten to go now. So I'm really happy about it. You just uh, released a new uh, single, uh, Marionette. Are, are you working on any other recordings for like a new record? Yeah, actually, um, it's pretty funny. Um, I'm working on. I'm always got. I always got my hands in a bunch of different stuff that I'm unfinished songs or ideas for songs. Um, and I also even started doing like a little side project last year called Black Rose, which is just kind of like a heavier hitting back to some of the stuff I was kind of doing. Um, just a side project. But um, it's kind of got, I've got like some electronic aspects to it, a little more like kind of uh, straightforward, not as, uh, pardon me, not as um, acoustic based. Um, and I've uh, got some stuff working with that with my friend Andrew, who does a lot of my recording. So yeah, and also I've been uh, just doing a lot of different stuff now as a vocalist, um, even playing shows with some friends of mine, kind of being the vocalist for the show or little projects like that. So it's been really, really fun kind of being all over the place with just being doing the same thing but in different contexts, different environments. So yeah. um, you were telling me a little bit earlier that you met some pretty uh, amazing musicians uh, on your recent trip to Nashville. Uh, could, you, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I don't know if I should be talking about their names that much, but <laughs> I'm sure it's okay. Uh, no, like um, I, we saw lots of really cool, um, amazing historical venues, the Ryman Theater, uh, beautiful places in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and uh, so being there and being in some of the studios, like Dark Horse Studios um, in Fairfield, Tennessee, got to just bump into a lot of really cool people. Um, some people I didn't even realize were as big as they are now that I knew back in the day, like there's a friend of mine named Billy Dawson. He's actually, you might know, he's a country artist down in Tennessee. And uh, when I saw him, when we played together uh, three, or three years ago or something in Nashville, he was like just kind of really trying to cut through and break through that ceiling and uh, he's like huge now and we bumped into each other we're like, oh hey so some people was like old friends but then some people I had never met like um, some guys from the Wu-Tang Clan <laughs> I got to hang out with them that was kind of a highlight of uh, my trip um, yeah a lot of really amazing um, artists from actually all over the world there were artists at this uh, event that I went to um, from literally every continent Australia um, I think China, everything, everything. Literally, I think it was. They said it was almost every continent that someone was from. So it's really cool. Someone from Sweden, I became really good friends with uh, Elizabeth Kittridge. If she's, if she sees this, Elizabeth, she's awesome. She's another folk artist from Sweden, actually, and she's awesome. Really cool. So, do you have any uh, tours uh, planned or show dates? Yeah, um, one of the fun projects that I'm doing is I'm uh, going back to semi roots this Friday. And Saturday, there's uh, there are shows at uh, in Worcester at Ralph's Rock Diner in Worcester, and uh, it's just like two day kind of festival type thing with some old bands from the Worcester scene. And so I'm screaming and singing this weekend. I just actually just did some of that this past weekend rehearsing with them, so it was fun. Um, I may be playing a show at the Iron Horse coming up soon. We're figuring that out, and uh, I've got some dates that I'm working on for the summer all over the country. So. Um, who are some of your biggest uh, influences in terms of your songwriting? Songwriting? When it comes to songwriting, because I, I play a handful of instruments myself, when it comes to actual songwriting, I feel like it can range from just musicians 
just like a guitarist in a band, like I'll be like, uh, if I know that they write a lot of this stuff, I can I kind of take some influence from them. Um, for me, I obviously uh, take a lot of my influence from the vocalist. It's always been just naturally what I tune into when I hear uh, music, but um, um, and some of those are just kind of classic singers. Some stereotypical ones like Nina Simone is like one of my all-time favorites. Period. Uh, Marvin Gaye, just some of the classic like soul blues standards. Awesome, really just powerful signature voices, um, and uh, and I even take some influence from the heavy rock bands that I used to listen to. I still listen to a lot of that stuff too, so I try to take it from a lot of places. Now, one thing I noticed, you have a tattoo on your right hand oh, of yeah. a symbol that, uh, if you're walking down uh, Main Street in, in Northampton, you're gonna run into one of those flyers. It might be really a really old flyer, but it yeah. has that symbol yeah, on it. Yeah. Where'd that come from? Uh, the short story is, uh, it's just a symbol of my creative spirit. There's a really long story, but I don't know how <laughs> <laughs> But it's um, kind of a slightly longer explanation is that I'm the kind of person that believes we're all kind of connected, whether it's some people aspire to religion or uh, uh, just energies, things like that. Um, and so I felt, I kept seeing this particular symbol kind of popping up in my life, and it was really a really specific symbol. Um, and so I said, you know what, that's got to be something, like some kind of token from the gods or whatever you believe. Um, and so I, I took it and said, that's, that, I'll use that for my symbol. When I was first starting to do the thing and start, the solo acoustic thing, I started playing some shows. I was like, that'll oh, be my little emblem thing, whatever. And then now it's like on some of the flyers, I have stickers and stuff. And so whenever we've done promotional stuff in towns, cities for shows, sometimes people, we put those up or put them on the flyers, yeah. So it's, it's a signature thing that I'm still proud of, and I still think it's uh, simple enough. Obviously, I got tattooed, so I'm stuck with it regardless. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Seth, uh, for Thank being you. a part of Thank Sessions. You.